right, all right, all right, all right. Just give him some praise, y'all. Just give him some praise. For whatever your reasons are, just give him some praise. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hey, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Whatever your reasons are. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all of your goodness. Thank you. Sister Thomas, just pray something for me. Doesn't matter. I just want everybody to reflect back over this week. Just this week. Just take a moment and meditate. Just think about just this past week. I don't know if you had any overwhelming things or any things that were, were, were either overwhelming or, just, or, or stressful to you or maybe you just simply were just simply contemplating life and how difficult and complex and how much of an enigma it can be. But if you had any distress or stress this week, and you're looking back on it, that means you came through. If you're looking back, saying, wow, that was rough, that means you came through. That means you're on the other side of it. Life is simply full of those kind of tests. And so we're constantly coming through. But isn't it wonderful? Isn't it a wonderful thing to know that despite our shortcomings, despite our myriad of faults, despite the fact that we confuse our own self. Say that, say that. When you perplex into your own self, that ought to let you know. It certainly lets me know that I can't do this walk by myself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I make my own self mad, I need help. When I can't even figure out why I did something, I need help. When I constantly don't have the right answer at the right time, I need help. You ever go into another room in your house and you labor to get to the room and then when you get there you forgot what you went to get? God forbid you went up some stairs. And, 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 and see, when you think you got a little sense, you think you can, you can just outsmart God. So, so I stood there and I said, I'm not going back downstairs. I'm going to stay right here until I remember oh, yeah. what it was. And I'd still be there now. I stood there a good six, seven, eight minutes. <laughs> I couldn't remember what I went up there for. I had to go back downstairs at that time. And I looked at something that triggered the reason I went upstairs. And that's what made me remember why I went. But I had to come all the way back, reflect and then go back upstairs. You ever, uh, you ever watch how life puts you in positions to one time, sometimes yeah, yeah. before you can move forward? You got to go back and reflect and you figure, oh, I, I got this. I'm, I'm going to make this work. But for some reason, it won't come together yeah. until you go back. 
and remember some of the things that God has done for you. That's what praise and worship is about. Lord, if you don't do nothing else for Jay Gang, nothing. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. So I thank God for our praise and worship time. I hope it, I hope you continue to come doing praise and worship. It's the only portion of the service that's just for God. It ain't got nothing to do with how you feel, whether you upset, whether you mad at God or not. Like Gardner Taylor said, sometimes all you can do is muster up a complaint. Yes, sir. You, you, you ain't got nothing good to say to God. You can't do nothing but muster up a bitter response and a complaint. And yet he will patiently hear that. Even that's a reason to say, Lord, thank you. <laughs> Reverend Floyd, come and render this prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed on us. We thank you for this devotion that you allowed us to go through. We know now, Father, We've been knowing for a while, but every time we come here, we know again how grateful you are. We come to praise you, but now we ask from you, Father. We come to the fountain. And we are the empty pitchers. And we need more, for we've been beat hard this last week. We've been pushed. We've been dragged. We've been shown ugly faces. But now we come, Father, because we need your, we need your mercy. Father, give us a word. Give us something that yes, make us yes, continue yes. to honor you the way we do on Sunday, the rest of this week coming. We love you, Father. We need you. Can we hear on high? For we know if we ask, you shall give. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Perhaps he wants to challenge you. I want to challenge you. I want to hopefully compel you to take a realistic look at you as it relates to God. Not just you and God. But look at yourself as it relates to God. Because in the reflection is how God relates to you. Y'all remember the book I wrote entitled is God a stranger to you if you don't know God as God has defined himself you could be serving a God you just don't know because the only one who can define God is God he's too awesome he's too magnificent He's too vast. It's too much of an enigma for man to define who he is. We get clarity as it relates to God from God. From the word of God. It's the only way God can be explained. And even that doesn't come close to defining who he is. But without that. You could be serving a God you know nothing about. 
So today, I want to challenge you in regards to what would be your testimony as it relates to God. If somebody, knowing you've been in church most of your life and know that you come to church on a regular basis and know that you love God, there's no question you love God, that you praise God, that you strive to live for God, if somebody would ask you, what is your testimony about God? Who is God to you? What can you tell me about God through Jesus Christ? What, why should I get involved? What would be your testimony? Would it be the cookie cutter, you need to go to church? That's the answer to everything. You need to get in the church. You need to go to church. Is that, is that the best we can come up with? Is that our testimony? Is that, we, is that what we tell strangers? About this awesome God that we've been studying and hearing about all of our lives? 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, you need to go to church. The New Testament part of the Bible is the part, part or portion of the Bible that was written after Jesus came to earth, after his incarnation, after he has come and promulgated his gospel and then ascended back into heaven after crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. So we read this glorious portion of the Bible called the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And all of them were written after Jesus has come incarnate to die on the cross to save us. Ascends back into heaven and then this marvelous portion of the Bible was written. And we know this portion of the gospel to be the gospel or the Bible to be the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, the synoptic gospels because they tell the same stories in basically the same sequential order from three different perspectives. And they give us this enormous insight into who Jesus is and what he's about and what his purpose is. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Then the fourth gospel of John is totally different from the synoptic gospels because it's the gospel where Jesus begins to reveal intimate things about him that were never revealed in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We start hearing him say things like, I am the resurrection, I am the good shepherd, I am the tree of life. He starts describing himself in very personal ways because Jesus is nearing the time that he's going to ascend back into heaven after his death, burial, and resurrection. So in the Gospel of John, he begins to reveal some things that he had never revealed before because his time is getting short. We've grown up knowing about the Gospels, the Gospel of Jesus Christ, knowing that it's four of them knowing that throughout the Gospels there are miracles and parables and lessons. There are trials and tribulations for our Lord and Savior as well as followers of Christ. 
but it's real and it's open and it's honest and it's truthful. The Bible just doesn't tell the best about Christians or people who follow God. It tells the worst too. It doesn't hide the worst of us. It doesn't just promulgate the best of us as if it's some kind of propaganda. It talks about the worst of us. It's a word that we can trust. It's a word that's applicable. I love that saying. It says it's as old as the desert sand and yet as fresh as the morning newspaper. It is relative and relevant to today's life. And yet so many of us never go to it or read it until Sunday. If then. And yet we claim a particular intimacy with God. When there's so much about him we don't know. And we can know it. And we should know it. And the more you love someone, the more you want to get to know them. So what do we do with this thing called the gospel? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So our subject matter is real simple. We know there's four gospels in the Bible, but I love what Gardner Taylor, there's a quote that, that, that's attributed to him, and I've always thought it was just simply so profound. He said, of course we know that there are four gospels, he said, but truthfully there should be five. Because there also needs to be a gospel according to you. Why, why, why are all of our testimonies and stories referrals? Everything that we know about God ought not be a referral. We ought not have to refer to Matthew or Mark or Luke, or John, at some point in time, after being in church most of our lives and being saved for most of our lives and following Christ for most of our lives, at what time do we have a personal testimony as to how good God is? Of course we need Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. That's where all of my learning came from. The Word of God is where all of our learnings come from. But at some point in time, after years and years and years of following Christ, don't you think that we should have a personal testimony too? Don't you think that we ought to be able to talk about some level of a miraculous change? Don't you think that, that we should be able to make reference to God's goodness without mentioning Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? Amen. Without mentioning some character in the Bible where well, you know what he did for Abraham, you know what he did for Peter, you know what he did for Matthew and Mark. At some time, don't you think that we should have a personal testimony about the goodness of God? The question becomes, what is the gospel according to you? Gospel comes from the Greek word euangelion. It, it means the spreading of good news. The gospel is about good news. It comes from old English word God spelled. Good news. The good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of God coming incarnate in Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for my sins so that I am no longer held captive by sin and its penalty. That's good news. It, it's good news when I'm saved and I didn't do anything. Jesus paid the whole price. That's good news. It's good news when Jesus says, I have come to save that which is lost. I've come to seek and save that which is lost, which was Jake Gaines. Messed up, tied up, jacked up. And yet somebody loved me despite 
me not loving them. That's good news. Hmm. And so often, church, so often, this is our response to good news. You, you, you know the old saying when we say familiarity breeds what? Mm-hmm. Sometimes we forget just how good God is. Just how, just how good this marvelous thing called the gospel, the euangelion is. How it was offered to us, not because of us, but despite us. How it was given to us out of love. Now Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they talk about the same Jesus. The same God. They talk about that intimate relationship that we have with the creator. Do, do you realize how geek we get when, 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 when we meet a, 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 a very important person, mayor, governor, God forbid you meet an actor from Hollywood. We're telling the world. You have no idea who I was with today. I was with the mayor. I sat in his office. I sat at his desk. We talk, me and the mayor, me and the president, LeBron and I, we got together. We close. <laughs> you have no idea who I talked to this morning. <laughs> You'll never get who I sat down with this morning and had a long uninterrupted conversation. I sat down this morning not with LeBron, not with the mayor, not with the governor, but I had a long conversation this morning. I, 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 I sat there as long as I wanted to and I was never told I had to leave. He even said, as long as you want to be in my presence, it's fine with me. Just take your time. Yeah. I was in the presence of the one who made everything out of nothing. I was in the presence of the one who created everything. I was in the presence this morning of the one who loves the unlovable. I was in the presence of the one who can make your enemy your footstool. I was in the presence of the one who's able to make a way out of no way. I was in the presence of the one that loves me so much that it's totally unconditional. Hmm. I was in the presence of the true and living God. Just like many of you. If you saved and sanctified and washed in the blood of the, of, of the Lamb, then you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you can be in the presence of God any time you choose. I don't understand why we have the answer to every problem right at our beck and call. And we'll call another person who in the same boat we in and ask advice from somebody that's drowning in the same water. What's our testimony? We don't have a testimony. We don't have a, we don't have a fifth gospel. There's no gospel according to you. There's no experiences according to you. You mean to tell me that we can't talk about how God has brought us out? We can't talk about how he made a way out of no way. We can't talk about how the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance, something that I really needed that I never would have thought about that got me delivered. We don't have a story of a miraculous event in our lives. It doesn't have to be a floating act head. It doesn't have to be turning water to wine. What about that time you went through a red light? What about the time that you rolled through that stop sign? What about the time that you changed lanes right on top of somebody at 75 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour? You don't think that's a miracle that in a millisecond 
You think you didn't lose control because you got an automatic stabilizer. You don't think that's something to tell somebody? Why isn't there a gospel according to us? Why don't we have more testimonies about this true and living God who loves us despite us? Why don't we have more testimonies about how he's brought us out? Why don't we have more testimonies about our conversations? Why don't we have more testimonies about trusting him? Why don't we have more testimonies? Where is the gospel according to us? Matthew, Mark, and Luke. There are great stories and great miracles and there are parables and stories that tell lessons for life, love, and family. Why don't, why don't we know more of those stories? Why don't we more, the more stories we know, the more you understand, the more you trust. The more you trust God, the more you lean on him. The more you lean on him, the more he rewards you. The more he rewards you, the more you talk about him. The more you talk about him, the more impact you make. Where is the gospel according to us? We ought to have five gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospel according to me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you where the Lord brought me from. This is not... Not about just raising Jairus daughter. This is about how God raised me up from the dead. How he raised me from the darkness of the unknown. How he raised me and brought me into the light of truth. How he blessed me on a regular basis despite myself. At some time, church, at some time, at some time. We ought to be able to talk about God without making a referral. Everything shouldn't come from Matthew. Everything shouldn't come from Mark. Everything shouldn't come from Luke and John. You need to stand up and say, I'm not sure what Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John got to say, but let me tell you what the gospel is according to me. Let me tell you how I was lost, broken, and fragmented. Let me tell you how I was out there in the world doing my thing. I wasn't praying. I wasn't talking to God. I wasn't looking for God, but praise be to God, God was looking for me. Mm. Mm, I wasn't praying. I wasn't praying. I was doing my thing in the clubs. I was doing my thing. Jake was doing his thing. I wasn't talking to God. I wasn't communing with God. I had no intimacy with God, but yet I had been saved a long time, but I wasn't obedient. I was doing my thing, but while I was doing my thing, while I was in darkness, God came looking for me, just like he came looking for Adam in the garden. I hear him saying, where's my Jake? Where's my Jake? I know that boy lost, but I'm going to find him. I'm going to find him because he knows me, but he won't be obedient. He knows me, but he won't trust me. He knows me, but he won't commune with me. So I'll find him. Oh, I need all of the word of God. I need it from Genesis to Revelation. But let me tell you something. I'm so glad I got a testimony. I'm so glad I got a gospel according to me. I'm so glad I got some good news. The you in Gilead. The good news that Jake that got Jake saved. The good news that brought me into the light out of darkness. We ought to have a testimony. Now, here's his here's. Here's the part that really, that really scares me is that there are many of us who have a testimony and won't give it. Oh my God, do you know how God feels about you still in his glory? You ought to be able to tell somebody where he brought you from. Tell them what you used to be. And every one of us got a used to. We got a used to. I don't care how holy you are now. You weren't always like this. I don't care how much you trust God. You weren't always like this. I don't care how much you lean on him. You weren't always like this. Every one of us got a used to. We got a used to. Things we used to do. I'm not saying 
and you got to tell everything you ever did, but you ought not keep everything to yourself. Man waving, let me tell you something. You didn't always wave your hand. You did some other things with that hand. You did. You used those fingers on your hand. All of us off the street, most of us anyway. Most of us, m m some of y'all were born sinless. Even though the Bible says you can't be, we think we are. Hmm. See, let me tell you something. I'm almost done. We get so excited about what God does for us. And we should. But don't you also think that we should get excited about what we can do for the cause of Christ? Don't you think that should excite us too? Don't you think that it should be more to our Christian walk than the miracles God can do for us? What about the things that we can do to make this environment better, to make God's work better, to make God's work more inviting to others, about loving people that don't love you, being nice to folk that won't be nice to you, being kind because Jesus said so, and not because you think that somebody ought to treat you a certain way. Why don't we have a testimony? We ought to be able to tell somebody, so-and-so didn't speak to me last Sunday, but I spoke to them anyway. So-and-so is upset with me, but I sat down and talked to him, and we got that thing straight, and now the devil can't get the victory. I got a story to tell. I got a testimony. Somebody loved me when I wasn't loving them. Somebody helped me when I wouldn't help them, and because they sold into me, now I'm going to sow into somebody else. I got a testimony myself. Somebody might ask, well, is that in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? It's in neither one of those. That's the gospel according to Jake. He brought me from darkness to light. He brought me from fragmented to whole. He brought me from being confused to being who I am today. And I still got a long way to go, but I want to tell somebody, I thank God for what he's done. I thank God for where he's brought me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, God has brought me from a mighty long way. God has made a new man out of me, a new life with my life. I don't have to tell you what Mark said. I don't have to tell you what Matthew said. I don't have to tell you what Luke said. Let me tell you what he's done for me. Let me tell you what he's done for me just last night. I ain't got to go back 2,000 years. I laid down last night. And, and, and let me tell you something. The doctors say when you get into the most restful part of your sleep, you are just an inkling away from death. An inkling from death. When you get your best sleep, you're just an inkling for death. Let me tell you something. If I can be that close to death last night, but standing in front of you today, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for a reasonable amount of help. Thank you that I can lift my hand. Thank you that I can go to work. What can I be? What can I do, Lord? What can I say? What kind of person can I be to make your kingdom more inviting to the unlovable? See, church gets in the way. We worry, we're so worried about what people are wearing. Whether it's perfectly clean, maybe as clean as they can get it. That, 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 that ain't church attire. What's church attire? If it ain't promoting filth, it's cool. If it ain't sexually seductive, that's cool. I had a guy tell me just a few weeks ago, isn't it disgusting? You're supposed to bring God your best. And then people just wear blue jeans to church, gym shoes. And I said, you know, you're so right. We should be suited up. Even if your heart ain't right. And he was like, what? I said, well, basically that's what you're saying. We need to dress right. But it don't matter if our heart ain't right. But if you were in Africa as a missionary, you wouldn't have that three-piece on in 118 degrees. 
You'd be in shorts and sandals. It's people who don't come to church because they ain't got the right outfit to wear. Now, you shouldn't walk up in here in anything seductive and all that kind of stuff. But what difference, what, what, what's the difference between blue jeans and slacks if you coming before God? We watch everything in church. We miss, miss the whole sermon watching other stuff. What if we haven't preached? I don't know. And, and here's what's proven. 80% of all sermons are forgotten within 48 hours. The average person won't know the subject of this sermon Tuesday. What did what Pastor preach? I don't know. He's sweating though. We don't know what he was talking about. But <laughs> I found this to be interesting. People don't want pastors to preach the same sermon every week. But they can listen to their same love song 50 times. They fit, you know all the lyrics. You know the whole story. And you'll put that song, and it don't have to be a love song. Some of them songs pretty vulgar. And we can listen to that over and over. But you better not let Pat, Pat didn't pass a preach that last week. We need a church meeting. <laughs> he can't be preaching the same mm -mm, not three sermons in a row but we done played that song 30 times all I'm saying y'all understand that Satan is proliferating his work while you're remaining complacent He's getting better at what he do. So you can't fight a bear with a switch. And stop with the get thee behind me Satan tip. That ain't going to work. That's not going to work if you're not communing with God. That's just a statement. So many of you, you got great testimonies about where God has brought you from. We're just not grateful enough for them. And then there are some others, you don't have one yet, but God is working on it for you. You just got to open yourself up to it. I don't care whether you've been going to church on a regular basis or not. God's been good to you. And the second hardship come, you ain't going to say, dear job. You're not going to say, oh, baseball team. Or, oh, football team. Oh, God. Dear God. And y'all know how it progress. It get more personal. My God. Oh, God. Hey, you ain't talked to him in years. But now that you get, come on, man. Come on. Stop. Stop. Because Satan doesn't care about you. And he'll give you just enough to trip you and then leave you to die by the curb. There needs to be a testimony about God from you. And if you don't have one, it's not because he's not making one in you. He is. We just need to draw closer to him. I tell people all the time, you ain't got to promise you coming to church every Sunday. But be consistent. If you're going to come twice a month, come twice a month all the time. 
But to just toss God your bones when you feel like it, that's not the way it works. It's not the way it works. You want a gospel to go into you? Let God work in you. Oh, Lord. Let him work in you. Procure more intimacy with him. You're not just going to go from zero to 100. I understand that. But don't just pray when you get in trouble or when you want something. What about asking God, Lord, what do I need to do to be more like you? It's not going to happen overnight. <laughs> People... What about five Gospels? There's four that's written. But don't you think that as good as God has been to you, that there ought to be one more? That there ought to be a UN Gelion. There ought to be good news from you. That's all gospel is. It's the most unique good news, but the word itself means good news. Shouldn't you and me have some good news about the God that has kept us all these years? You should have a testimony. God fed all of us yesterday something. It's clear he woke all of us up. That's clear, because we here. And he woke people up that ain't even thinking about him. And he woke me up so many years that I wasn't even thinking about him. I had walked away from the church, and I was gone. I left the church and took my dollar. I almost shut the church down. I took my dollar with me. And all those years, the jokes I had about Jesus, oh, I had great Jesus Christ jokes on the job. Oh, I could make you laugh with the Jesus Christ jokes. And I knew he was real. And I played with him like a toy. And why God didn't strike me down, I understand now. Why he didn't strike me down? Or just leave me alive but left me broken, fragmented and useless? I understand now. In these last 35 years. But if I can have one person today. Doesn't matter. Because all good sermons ain't sermons to shout on. Sometimes we just need to grow a little bit. There needs to be a gospel according to you. God testing you right now in an event in your life, right now, trying to help you create a new gospel, that gospel according to you. You're in a situation right now where you could bring light to somebody else. And you're wondering, you're still looking at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and God is trying to create a new one in you. So you have your own testimony along with them. And you're overlooking it. You're overlooking it. Because some of us think we're so holy that we're faultless. And God is trying to create a new testimony in you. There may be one today. If you've never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
if you've never received him, it's important for you to understand this. Jesus died on the cross for what the Bible connotes as sin. Of course, we're uh, offended by that term, which, okay, you know, hopefully you'll get over that. But it's funny because people think that the word sin means evil, bombastic. It just simply means you're missing the mark. You're missing the expectations of God. You're missing the mark. You're missing the target. That's what it means. There are a lot of people that ain't evil that's never going to receive Christ and they're going to bust hell wide open if you believe the Bible. And I do. They don't smoke, drink, cuss, nothing. They don't do a lot of things Christians do. But they're going to bust hell wide open because they ain't received Christ as Lord and Savior. And I hear it all the time. I've been doing this and I'm, I just don't believe there's a hell. Okay, that's cool. But why you be talking about heaven? Because the same God mentioned both. So if ain't no hell, why do you believe there's a heaven? If he a liar, then I'm sure he lied about both of them. But Jesus died for me. Jesus loved me when I didn't give a crap. And he died on that cross. And he buried him because he was dead. He went in no coma like these schools of thought. He was dead. And on that third Jewish day, he rose up. And the Bible says, he says, I have all the authority. All power is in my hands now. To give you new life. So all those years I played God. Blasphemed him. Joked about him whole nine yards. He let his love overshadow over uh, override my stupidity and I'm so glad God even forgives stupid <laughs> so if you've never received him you know what it takes it's just simply asking the Lord to come into your life and you receive him as your Lord and Savior it doesn't mean you understand the Bible like I, it doesn't mean none, none of that you just simply realize you're a mess. Or you believe what the Bible has said about, wow, I don't have no intimacy with God unless I have it through Jesus Christ. If you believe that, then you just simply come down and receive him. God will indwell you with the Holy Spirit. It's not something you feel. Or you ain't got to run, jump, nothing. What will happen, though, is you'll start seeing your disposition. Even when you can't quit acting stupid, you want to. Because your attitude changes. So if you're here today and you've never been baptized, you're, you're walking on shaky ground. Because if you died today, you're doomed. If you believe the Bible. If you don't, none of this is relevant anyway. But if you're here today, just come on down and receive him as your Lord and Savior. If You've already been saved. You know you're saved, but you haven't, uh, you haven't associated yourself with, with the ministry. And you aren't, uh, you know you aren't fulfilling the things that God would like you to do in his work. And you'd like to be a part of this ministry. Just come down and do that too. Um, and then we'll put you in the hands of, of, of our leaders. We will explain to you uh, the plan of salvation and or just being a part of our ministry. If you're here today, just come on down. Right here. Praise God. God bless each and every one of you. We thank God. Hallelujah, y'all. Hallelujah. Uh, it is my, um, it is my uh, prayer that you will... Um, 
that you will um, open yourself up and ask God to soften your disposition toward him. Um, whether you become a part of this ministry or not, doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, uh, certainly to you young people too, you're not going to be young and strong forever. And the graveyard ain't full of old folk. So, it's just real, man. Jesus loves you. Oh, my goodness, does he love you. And he's just looking for someone who will soften their hearts toward him. And God can use you in ways you can't imagine. That's young and old. Um, I was thinking the other day, I turned 73 years old, and I was like, it's like, wow, well, I remember when I when I woke up, I used to get up. I just wake up and get up. I wake up now, I sit on the side of the bed. <laughs> I'd be like, no, I can't be doing the jump up tip. Uh, I see you laughing over there, Sister Moody. Um, but let me tell you all something, man. Uh, God is so good, so. What we're going to do, oh, listen, um, fifth Sunday now, um, we're going to be celebrating our uh, church anniversary. Come on. Yeah, put your hands together. Yeah, man. You know why? You know why I'm excited about it is that I'm just glad to to, to be able to play a small part in the history of this church. Uh, it's people it's people in the audience right now that you know, remember the synagogue in 60 years, I think. It's crazy. Um, um, or, or even more, and, and and they've been faithful all these years to the sustenance of this church. So I'm gonna put this out there because I don't want no no misunderstanding. Fifth Sunday, it's gonna be church anniversary, and we want y'all to give toward the anniversary, and you give out of love. I am not about to put no assessments on it. It's been it's been two tough years. And we've all been adjusting to, to, to this thing, but we know what we've all tried to do um, in these years in terms of church anniversary. So fifth Sunday and, and church anniversary is, is, is above and beyond uh, your agape giving. So you give what you can. Give what you can, but let's celebrate. We're going to celebrate uh, our, our, our church anniversary, the fifth Sunday this month. And so come on out early enough so we can have great praise and worship because God has been good. The little church on the corner, a lot of a lot of you have grown up in this church. And a lot of you have become more mature to this ministry, to, to, to Synagogue Baptist Church, whether it was before me or after me, it doesn't matter. Uh, before me or since me, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The point is, this is our church. 